Henry VIII, it's believed, executed 70,000 people during his time on the throne, during the Tudor period, and many of those executions took place at the Tower of London. The tower became infamous as a site of execution, with two of Henry's own wives, Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard, losing their lives on the scaffold there. Anne was executed by sword, Catherine by axe, but there were many other executions that occurred inside of the Tower of London during this time period. But there was one incredibly shocking one that saw Henry VIII kill an elderly member of the Plantagenet family, and with the killing of Margaret Pole, Henry was eliminating a woman with royal blood, but her execution was performed by an executioner described as a wretched and blundering youth, who made a real mess of the proceedings. Join us today as we look at Henry VIII's most brutal execution, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Margaret Pole was the daughter of George Plantagenet, the Duke of Clarence, who was a double-crossing brother of King Edward IV, and he was also the brother of Richard III. Her mother was the daughter of Richard Neville, also known as Warwick Kingmaker, so she was seen as incredibly high class, and she did possess royal blood. She was one of only two women during the 14th century that became a peeress in her own right, without having a husband who also claimed a title, and she was a remaining member of the Plantagenets and the House of York, who were the enemies of the Tudors. Her childhood was rather different, being caught up in the Wars of the Roses, but her uncle Edward IV ordered the execution of her father, with her father being drowned in a barrel of Malmsey wine inside the walls of the Tower of London. But the Battle of Bosworth Field ultimately ended the ruling family of the Plantagenets, with Richard III being slain on the battlefield. When Henry VII came onto the throne, beginning the Tudor dynasty, he married Margaret Pole's cousin, Elizabeth of York, and Margaret was looked after by the new royal ruling family. In winter 1487, she was given over in marriage to Henry VII's cousin, Sir Richard Pole, who was a prominent courtier, a member of the King's government. Margaret Pole then became close with Catherine of Aragon, who had also come over from Spain to marry Henry VII's eldest son, Arthur, and she became one of her ladies-in-waiting. Richard Pole died in 1505, leaving Margaret a widow with five children, and she initially did not have a huge amount of money and land. She had no income, and was forced to live inside of Sion Abbey with the nuns, but then Henry VIII came onto the throne, and she returned to court life and prominence. Henry VIII married Catherine of Aragon, the brother of Catherine's first husband, Arthur Tudor, following his death at Ludlow Castle. Margaret then became one of Catherine's ladies again, and Parliament with this restored some of her brother's land to her, and Margaret then became known as the Countess of Salisbury. She was good at managing her lands, and was also key in promoting learning and Renaissance ideas. Her sons did well in life, and became well thought of members of court to begin with, and things were very promising for Margaret, and she did begin to have a number of disputes with Henry VIII over land. But she remained close to the monarchy, and she became the governess to Henry VIII's eldest daughter, Mary, who later became known as Bloody Mary I. She was close with the young girl, and even backed her when she was declared illegitimate, after Henry got rid of Catherine of Aragon, and then married Anne Boleyn. But Margaret's son continued to dissent against Henry VIII. Reginald Pole eventually was regarded as a cardinal, and he became a huge enemy of the king. Pole even began to speak with possible enemies of the English king, to try and inspire an invasion, but with this, Margaret Pole also fell under suspicion for her son's dissent, and also for this began to look unfavourable in the king's eyes. Margaret even refused to give the king Mary the first jewels back, and Henry described her as a fool with no experience, after Henry broke up and dissipated Mary's household and her staff. Reginald Pole continued to rise throughout the ranks of the church, and continued to speak up against Anne Boleyn and the English king. Henry even said that if a cardinal's hat arrived in his kingdom for Margaret's son, then he would not have a head to place a hat on top of. He continued to speak out against Henry VIII's policies, and this was a huge insult to the English king, who now wanted to smash the Pole family to pieces. Reginald Pole did become a cardinal in 1537, and the Pope put him in charge of organising resistance and parts of the Pilgrimage of Grace. This was one of the most serious rebellions that Henry VIII faced during his reign, following his break from the Catholic Church. The pilgrimage centred around Henry VIII's dissolutions of the monasteries, which resulted in thousands of monks being made homeless, and a number of abbots and senior figures in the monasteries were executed when they refused to give over their religious houses. 
the pilgrimage of grace caused chaos across the north of England, and Pole was involved in instigating the rebellion, and Geoffrey Pole, another one of Margaret's sons, was arrested in 1538, as it was found he was in contact with his rebellious brother. But also during the interrogation process, Margaret Pole was implicated with a link to her son, and Margaret, who was at this point around the age of 65, found herself accused of treason, and the Countess of Salisbury was then arrested. She was accused of treason, and with this lost all of her lands and titles, and during an investigation, it was stated that Cromwell found a piece of implicating evidence against Margaret Pole that would make her guilty. It was said Cromwell had found a tunic which carried the icon of the five wounds of Christ, and with this, Margaret was linked to Catholicism and underground Catholic worship. However, this was allegedly found six months after her house was turned upside down, and it was found out of thin air, meaning that it was likely false, and that Cromwell had lied and planted it, as a way to sentence Margaret Pole to death. This is exactly what happened, and it was said that Margaret Pole would be executed at the King's will, whenever Henry VIII felt like it. Margaret Pole, a woman in her 60s, who was considered rather elderly during the time, was left inside the Tower of London for two and a half years under lock and key. She was allowed some servants and was given some grants of clothing, but inside of the walls of her cell she wrote, For traitors on the block should die, I am no traitor, no not I. My faithfulness stands fast and so, towards the block I shall not go, nor make one step as you shall see, Christ in thy mercy, save thou me. With this Margaret was so desperate and she was suffering with her long imprisonment, not knowing if every day was her last. It was on the morning of the 27th of May 1541 that Margaret Pole was told she was to die within the hour. She claimed she had committed no crimes and that she was guilty of nothing, but Henry VIII had ordered her execution. It was hastily planned and there was no scaffold that would be used to take her head. She was taken from her cell to part of the tower where there was simply a wooden block placed upon the ground. Stood by the block was an axeman who stood armed with his weapon, and because she was considered of royal and noble birth, she was granted a quieter execution inside the walls of the Tower of London. There are two accounts that exist about Margaret Pole's execution. At the age of 67 she went to her death, not knowing what she was accused of, or what she had been found guilty of. The main executioner of London was sent north to deal with the rebels, in the wake of the Pilgrimage of Grace, and because of this, the man brought in to perform Margaret Pole's execution was inexperienced. A report states how a wretched and blundering youth literally hacked her head and shoulders to pieces in the most pitiful manner. This account also states how it took around ten brutal swings of the axe to perform her execution and take her head from her body. Another account states how after the first blow from the axe, Margaret jumped up and managed to escape from the block, and then began to attempt to flee the executioner and was chased by him around the courtyard where her execution took place. This then says 11 swings of the axe were needed to behead her. But the similarity in these accounts are that Margaret Pole died a very brutal death, and let's remember that she was an elderly woman when this happened. Margaret Pole's execution made the Tower of London a feared place of death and bloodshed, and after being imprisoned for a few years she met a horrific end. The first blow of the axe embedded into her shoulders would have been very painful. If Margaret did spring up from the block, it is incredible to consider this, but it could be a Victorian embellishment. She is today considered a saint. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.